Hey guys, it's Ellen. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to go over just how to make a simple landscape. I go over the step by step. People have been asking me, what do I even start? And I'm just going to give you tools that I would use to start a simple landscape and how to get out of your head and making everything so detail oriented. As you can see in this particular landscape, not everything is so detailed, maybe just like one thing like the house, excuse my painted fingers, but hey, we're painting here. <laughs> um, yeah, so I go this step by step. I give you a reference photo and talk about composition from the photo and how to go about taking your photos and just, you know, honing it down to an area that would be perfect for a simple landscape. If you have any questions, leave them in the you know leave them in the comment section. Let me know what kind of things that are you know you're stuck on. What do you are you stuck on landscapes? Are you stuck on florals? Stuck on shadows? Values? Watercolor paint? All that stuff. I'd love to hear your comments, and maybe we'll turn it into a tutorial. Um, also, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a, um, a live stream in the top tier once a month. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out right up here. Boop the little icon thing that pops up in a second. So without further ado, let's get painting a landscape. So to start with, I'm going to talk about composition and um, I have the reference photo linked in the description box. Uh, this is a free photo that you could use for whatever you want to use for. But see the composition here, you know, it's like it's like 50-50, right? The sky is 50 and then the the rest of the composition is 50. So you got the house and the, the fence and the trees and whatnot. And the sky is basically all white because it's like a sun setting, but we don't have to keep it like that. We're just playing around with, um, you know, composition today. And so that's the beginning of like doing a landscape. When you take a photograph or something, excuse my painted fingers, but you know, hey, what can I say? <laughs> um, you have to choose, like you're gonna paint it exactly as is and then play around with it, you know, for more artistic style. And that's where you come, your creativity comes in. So I would probably cut the sky, you know, maybe to like here with my pencil line. I'm gonna put a pencil line or a marker. My personal preference would maybe for this particular photo, cut it here and then make this longer. So I'm gonna make the, um, my sky smaller and make the foreground longer and have the house in the back as you can see i moved up the picture so you can see the proportions of how i'm going to do this you know you see like the how it's much longer from the house going downward and i necessarily don't have to have the um perfect size house you know you can proportion it a little bit make it a little bit smaller it's just a, a reference photo to give you an idea of how to make a loose landscape so i'm just going to draw in where i want the house and then we're going to go from there. So I always say kind of start off um, the landscape. If you're going to have a landscape, do the sky first and then the middle ground foreground. You know, that's how I would work personally. You know, not everybody wants to work that way. But usually the sky goes first and then you work from there. You build from there. Do you want to fill up the whole page of the sky or some of it? So and also you can be conscious of like where things are going here. So if you really wanted to have a really intense landscape like I'm going to try and do today. I'm going to have my pencil line go here. I've got my bushes here. I want to kind of keep where it's supposed to go. There's a couple of trees back here and I don't want my um, sky to kind of, you know, fight with it. So here we go. Just little bushes. I'll just erase. This is a great eraser. It's like the needed eraser. Just gonna put in some bushes. There we go. So I want a really kind of intense, straight on sky. All right. And you can keep the colors. And see, obviously in the photograph it's white. I'm not gonna have that. Um, any kind of blues you like. I have ultramarine that I like a lot. And you can mix with other colors. So there's one or two things. And you can have even other color, like a yellow or a cream. Maybe I'll have like blue with a little orangey sky. I don't know. I have some yellow here. I mix a little pink. It's kind of like a brown yellow. <laughs> I want more of a bright orange. So maybe I'll use my brilliant orange in here. Playing around with this. All right. So I have a flat wash brush three-fourths 
inch uh, it's a velvet touch Princeton brush you can get a cheap flat wash brush from any craft store or art supply store and I have bought a Joseph here and my paper towels next to me so I'm gonna start actually just gonna start with you know I'm not gonna put the water on the paper first I'm gonna put the paint on really intense see just going over here and around where I had the bushes and the roof and now you can see them in play kind of right get a little thicker with the paint down here different skies now you can make yours lighter I decided to try something different today make a little more intense I might flip it and then I can bleed the color see so I flip my pad now you can go back in with some deeper color just playing around with some different types of techniques but I always start with the sky. Oh, I think I went over my little house, but that's okay. It's going to be smaller now. I'm going in this intense blue. And then I can just clean off my brush, add some water, and kind of push that paint around. Show him who's boss. <laughs> See how I'm bleeding the paint into the water? Just add water underneath here. And you can just do that simply. And you can add more paint, and it will bleed down too. I'm going to get a little thicker on this paint. And you tilt it. You see how it's bleeding? And you can kind of play with it. You can kind of move it a little bit. Grab some more water. And it will it will bleed a little bit. I'll tap my paper towel. Maybe I'll grab some of this orange. See how this looks. If it gets a little too muddy, I might take it out. Kind of like a sunset, but just a little different. I flip back, come back with the blue. See how it looks. If I like it or not. Mm. Maybe I'll add some more clouds with the blue. I mean, the clouds, excuse me, blue sky. But you can add, it looks like clouds, like it's sun setting. So you're tapping. See how I'm just tapping this and pushing it? It's kind of looking like clouds in the sky. So I always start off with the sky, like I said. Just kind of my thing. And then from there, we'll do the background and then the foreground. Now if you want some clouds in here, I'm going to remove some paint. A little technique I'm going to show you. Clean off your brush and take your brush and kind of twist it and then tap it on the paper towel, removing the paint. So you know I've made a cloud in here. wasn't intending on doing that, but I decided as I'm painting, I'm going to do that. So that's a little tip tap removing paint method. You can use a paper towel too. And that method, as I've shown many times, just taking off a piece of paper towel, kind of squint it and then remove it like that. The brush method is kind of nice because it's more natural. The paint might fold back into it, so it looks a little more natural. So I kind of have like this nice little sky. A little bit of orange up there for the sunset. I'll go back in and add a little more orange. Kind of in here. See where it hits the blue, it's going to make a little brown. That's okay. I'll, I'll play with a little yellow too, but be careful with the yellow. Because you know that the yellow and blue are going to make green. Generally, you kind of want to wait till this kind of dries and then kind of put it on. A, but I'm just going to play today. And I'll go back and add some orange. So I had no intention of doing a sunset, but you know, look what happened. Sometimes things just happen that way. They evolve as I'm painting. And so now in that one section, it was looking a little green. I'll take my paper towel and just lift up some of that color. So it doesn't look green. And that's as well. That's that's all I'm gonna do for the sky. I'm just gonna keep it simple like that. But I do want it to wait till it dries to start to go in and do any kind of intense uh, bushes and other things in here. And I have to do. I have to fix my little house here. I'll just grab my Princeton eight round brush and see kind of roof doesn't look straight. I want it to be straight because that paint got in the way. And I'll kind of manipulate it a little bit. 
and just since it's still kind of wet I can kind of fix this and just kind of bleed that right in there I really wanted this intense straight line so I'll go back in and add some nice deep color as you see there all right so we're going to let this dry we're going to let this dry and then we'll start playing with the background and foreground all right, so now we're going to do this little thing. We're going to play with the background a little bit. Um, I'm going to grab my flat wash brush again and water it and clean it off. And I've mixed up some greens here. So I've got my cadmium yellow deep and I mixed it with peacock blue to get a light green. Then take the same blue, you know, 50 50 for this one, more yellow on this one. And then I've added some Prussian blue to this one. I want to keep my house actually white. I don't really want to paint it um, like a deep color. I might play around with that later, but I definitely want to give it deep color. So we're going to do this thing where I'm going to grab some of each color, really kind of concentrated. So I'm putting more yellow in here, peacock blue, and way more yellow. And then in here, the Prussian blue. And I'm going to add a little brown to that, or like a little red. I have this cadmium red light. It's going to make it a little deeper still. Yep, I'm going to go back and add more yellow, get that deep green. All right, so we'll kind of be kind of blending some um, concentrated color and non-concentrated color. So I clean up my brush again. I'm going to grab a little more of this yellow and a little bit of burnt umber. Okay, so I'm just going to use this flat wash brush. I'm going to push down, see it's kind of wet to indicate the um, bushes and then push down again in here, right? And then here, pushing down, kind of turning it to like a rounder shape, but not necessary. Just pushing down, you see that pushing down kind of method? And then I can do another one here. And now I'm gonna add the dark green. Maybe a little more brown in there really concentrated. See that? It's going to bleed into that top area. And I kind of take the brush, hold it on its side, and kind of go up like a tree. See? Putting that dark, and then go up. I'm going to add a little more blue. This is just a fun way playing around with some bushes, right? And then the land just going like that, the little dark color. I might clean up my brush now at this point. Grab this medium blue, bluish, I mean, excuse me, green. I'm adding a little burnt umber to it. Just going like this on its side, pushing down a little bit. See how we're playing with this landscape? Look at that. It's really kind of just a simple landscape. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my brush again, clean it off with water, grab, loosen up some of this yellow, put it in that yellow screen. I'm gonna hold it here on the side, going across, pushing it down again, going across, and we're gonna do something fun. <laughs> gonna clean off our brush, and now we're gonna just click water that's on the brush Kind of push that. See that? Clean off it again. Grabbing some more water and just letting that paint bleed. Touching up this area. Bleed. So you're kind of making a cool kind of landscape, right? Simple, cool, stylized. We can kind of keep this white up here, but I might want to go on ahead and add some greens back here. There's a simple green back area. All right, it was kind of yellow in the front here. We could keep that. And then water down some of this green here. I watered it down a lot. Playing around with adding in that. Now again, take some of that concentrated color. Here's that green I'm mixing. Oh, I need some more brown. It's too goofy green. When I mean a goofy green, it's it's it needs some <laughs> natural looking tones to it. I'm just tapping in 
some darkness here. Really concentrate it again here. See how I did that? I could do another big bush here. I'm gonna add some more brown. And take the side of my brush. Just gonna go off on the side like this, adding some like scribs, 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 scribes, I don't know, lines like that. We're getting this kind of like more abstract. I will go back in with my Prussian blue, mix in here on the side, very concentrated. See, adding some scrape lines like that across. Just a simple thing. Now we could use something else like this, a tool like this, as a spray bottle. I'm gonna zoom back out and just spray the bottom and see where this drips. Hold it on its side. It's not really dripping, you kind of move it. See, we're having fun here, guys. I'm adding some more yellow color. I don't necessarily have to keep that landscape the way it looks. I'm gonna add some green up this way. I wanted to change it. I wanted to make a simple, fun landscape. Go back and out here. Right? Just fill the bottom if you want. Some more of this yellowish green color, or add more greens. Maybe more bluish green color. Do some do dabs. See, I'm just tapping it. Still using this flat wash brush, by the way. Now it's getting a little drippy down here. You can take a paper towel and just kind of lift some of the paint. And I haven't hit every part of my paper, and that's intentional because I'm just kind of concentrating, maybe kind of up in here, right? At this point, you can take a, like another brush, like this uh, Princeton eight round, and start to do some more detail concentrated color again get the green in here it's pretty dark up by the house maybe i didn't intend to keep it that way if i didn't i can just kind of move some paint just a little bit and add some of that yellow paint but i can go back in with this deeper color this green and blue color and start putting in some details if you wanted to add a fence also do that so I'm just gonna go in here and tap, tap, tap. You know, if you want some bushes, then it'll look like this. There's some trees in the background. I'm just tapping in this darker color, just like that. And even up in the front. Now see, we had all these different trees. Don't necessarily have to paint them all. Just kind of wiggling in the color. It's nice to have, you know, something that doesn't have to be like that. Um, it can actually take, I have this color called neutral tint or make a black or a brown and add some real intensity, you know, going across with that black kind of color tone. Again, making this lines. I want it stylized. And then if I wanted to put the fence in, maybe some of it like, you know, indicate there's a fence there. It's still kind of damp, wet. You know, maybe I'll try and see how it looks, if it's gonna bleed. Really concentrated paint though. You know, it's kind of in front of it. I'm playing around with that. You see, it could also have some fun playing around with scraping the paint. So it's bleeding, scrape it, if it's still wet. See, make those little scrape marks. And once this dries, we can go back in and do another wash of it if you wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep it kind of simple. I don't know if I necessarily liked this green going in here. I might play around with adding in some other greens. Just going over this. And then adding in the deep green. Again here. Taking my brush on its side. Just doing these kind of lines, just adds more interest. You could pretend like there's a nice big green bush here. Here. See, I'm just twisting my brush, making these rounded shapes. 
like bushes or trees going in some deeper color even some browns it's just fun to play with the brush that's flat you kind of twist it turn it all that good old stuff right and at this point you can start playing out adding some grasses so I have the brown which is burnt number and we've got some greens and we play around with adding all these with like a I have a skinny little number six uh, long round brush take it kind of making these little lines if it's still damp you might want to wait mine's a little damp still I might go back and wait till it dries a little more but you can do these little scrapes and uh, put some like little little doodads of wildflowers that are white kind of pretty so by the power and the magic of television, which is not really television, YouTube, I dried the uh, foreground so that we can do the grasses. And just taking a skinny brush, and again, just make some really kind of sweet. This is the foreground one, and we talked about the background, like the sky, the, the sky, the background, and the foreground. You can get kind of detailed. You can just do some nice grasses. I wouldn't go crazy like having them have to be everywhere just in the front kind of you can get a little bit you know small in the back see so making these little lines kind of going I'm like the wind's blowing this way you know and you want a variety of tones of greens browns you can really just get kind of loose get a little darker in some areas not everywhere the trick is to make it more interesting by not just making this one note of one green, one yellow. See, I'm crisscrossing the, um, the stems of all this. Sometimes I'm trying to think of words. It's like, what's not coming out? That's the brain fog, right? Just in that area. They don't have to do every single part. This is what I'm talking about, like editing. Editing the photograph, editing the area. I'm just going to do some grasses here. Sweep, 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 sweep. Now for the house. Zoom in. Um, I really just want to do, like I said, kind of keep it white. I can add some blue and black, black windows. You know, just simple black windows like that. The roof we could make gray if you wanted to. You know, you could add a couple of little shadows with the blue, blue gray. I added some that black with the ultramarine blue and I'll just take my number six brush here I think like I didn't know if I wanted a brown house maybe a white house and then it's going to need some shadowing so I'll add that blue just kind of put some on the side here and this side would be the shadow side so it's going to be gray and then the roof line you can play around with this you can get a little bit darker if you want to have brown go ahead it's not necessary to keep it exact colors. Getting a little bit darker here. Okay, a little more deep color under the roof. And then the roof I'll probably make gray. I'll just change that up. Or I can make a brown, the grayish brown, adding in the burnt umber and neutral tint together. Water it down. So maybe that would be too intense with the white 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 but I didn't want a brown house and a brown roof so I'm editing it it's my little like nobody knows where this house is right <laughs> now if you want it realistic obviously you paint it way that it's supposed to be and adding a little bit deeper color here but it's not necessary to get so detailed when you're painting something for yourself just trying to start out kind of figuring out how to do a landscape i'm just gonna get a little bit darker here i could put some like little lines indicate siding and get a little darker again here see that's how you kind of indicate white without doing white a little too much i might remove some of that if i felt like that was a little too much gray Put a little watercolor there and lift it up. And the roof looks a little curved. 
I'll just straighten that out. And you get more detail with, um, you know, putting some, you can put some pen lines around the windows and removing some of that house because it was just a little too dark. There we go. Add some lines, some detail. Some details go a long way. You can just add like, these little lines going across. You can add more windows. You can add some more windows on the side. Looks a little more interesting, right? The fence, I can go back in and have that fence. It's kind of like, now you kind of see it and some of it you don't. It's kind of blurred in some spots. Just loosely sticking it in here. So now we have the little house and the, the foreground. You might want to take something like white gouache, which I use a lot, or even just yellow itself. And then you can make the little doodads of, we can indicate like a wildflower field. So you just water it down a little bit and you're just kind of tip tapping it. No, maybe I would use a different brush, but you see? Maybe a rounder brush. That's a little too small. Maybe I would grab like a Princeton 10. Um, this kind of brush. Even though it's big, the little taps won't be so tiny. A little bit bigger. And just kind of tip tapping. And it would be a little looser. See? You can even splatter it if you want to. I would just really be careful with the top half because so if you want to splatter it, you would cover it like this. So you could even splatter it. I'll take a 10 brush, water down the gouache. Get You want to put the piece of paper on top of it so you don't splatter it everywhere. And just go in here. And that would make it easier. Field. Maybe lift a little bit more. It becomes a little easier to do the, the wildflowers this way. And to take a little brush and go crazy, right? Painting every single little dot. Kind of a little more natural. But you do want to make sure there's a piece of paper in front of it. So there you go. <laughs> so that was pretty simple. I mean, you know, don't go too crazy. Uh, maybe I would have changed some things here. Maybe I'll add some like a bright color by the house. Maybe the house has like a little detail that's red just to draw your eye up to the house more, even though you see the house, I just feel like there's something missing. So I'm just gonna add a little red there, up in here. Could add a little red flower or something, just, just the color itself. I mean, it's just pulling your eye up even more. And I'm not really worried about this flat little, you know, bush. It's just a way to do the landscape. Just a simple sky, simple house. And like I said, you can go back in, Use a brush or even a marker. I have a Sharpie and just go around the windows and add details, the doorway. You can do little lines for siding, you know, or even um, thin lines to indicate all the details of the house. It's nice to have a combination of just a painting and some ink or something like that. So that makes it more interesting. I see that. The up and you see my little house is kind of boring and goofy, but that's okay. I like it like that. This is supposed to be simple kind of landscape. Nothing special, right? But it's fun to do. And you just add all the details later. Now I would like wait for the windows to dry before I would add in. If I was going to add in, I would take some white gouache. You want to add some window panes. And just take a little brush right over the black. And now you've made it even more detailed. Right? Okay. With the window panes. So all these little things to do. You see I have a little spot here, by the way. If you have this mistake that you sp you've got paint everywhere and you have a little spot, there's a little trick trying to get it out. Clean water. I have a paper towel close by. Mine's kind of dirty by now, but I have one that's not so dirty. And you try and just get water on it, kind of wiggle it. I wouldn't use a super nice brush, maybe a little more um, stiffer brush, and try and remove it like that. 
See how it's slowly coming up? If it doesn't, well, maybe paint something down there. See mine slowly coming up. It's taking its time. You kind of want to do this right away, by the way. If you notice that you have a little spot, you really want to get in there fast to remove it. It's not as bad as it was, right? So there's our simple landscape. Um, I wanted, like I said, I'm gonna make the house white. I didn't want to make it black. And it all came from this inspiration of this. Now maybe I would go in and add the blue windows because those are kind of pretty, right? The, uh, I have this beautiful color called Verdier Blue. If I activate it, I can actually use the reference photo for that. I would go around the windows. Like I said, the little details, tiny details you can play around with. And the blue, you can add blue shadows so it's like a French country house. I was thinking about that too, or blue door. Maybe that one doesn't have a door, but heck, I've created my own little landscape. Who's to say I can't create my own little door? So my paint's a little too watery. I don't have a little blue door. Now it's more interesting, right? Exactly. And then paint the blue on this side too. Don't leave it out everywhere. <laughs> so there you go, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, you know, how I started landscape, how to paint kind of like an abstract expression. It's semi-abstract. It's not totally abstract because you see the house, but it's pretty much, you know, the trees aren't like a solid with the little leaves, all that stuff. You can take the blue and put some blue in here. Like the cornflowers, play around with it. It doesn't have to be all white everywhere. That's why I like sometimes using paint right from the tube. See, and a little blue, it's kind of fun. Let me get like a little French house instead of the house that we have. <laughs> all right, guys, I hope you enjoy this. I'm trying to get, you know, out of your comfort zone, using a flat wash brush, twisting it. You take some just thick paint in there, just an expression of the sky and of the land around it. Doesn't have to be the way the photograph looks. You just use the photograph as inspiration, create your little house. Unless, of course, you wanted to make it exactly how it's supposed to be if you have a photograph of your own. Then spend a little time on the details of the house and the colors of the house. But don't go crazy about the back. Don't go crazy about this part. Get really loose on that. All right, guys, take care. Have a great day. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you haven't hit the bell notification, please hit the bell notification and I'll speak to you soon. Ciao.